Fate Heavens Feel is one of the roots of the popular corn graphic game Fate Stay Night. On this route, Emiya's main love interest is Matu Sakura, that purple-haired chick with the personality of a plastic chair. Yeah, I know you find she's hot and stuff, but it's not the same as fuck King Arthur though. The movie begins with Shiru training archery at the club, holy sh**, why is this bow so big? Is that even useful? It seems that Shinji doesn't like him very much, the Shinji ones tend to be problem children. Later Shiru appears with a broken arm and Matu's the only one next to him. I'm not implying anything, it's not like this brat has balls to do such a thing. Emiya comes home, there are as many people there as at my last birthday party. Party. It goes in the tools because it needs to fix the TV. Instead of a screwdriver, he takes a napkin. Shuru prays for the napkin which starts to shine up. I respect all religions, but I just wanted to make it clear that Jesus could easily destroy that paper. Just joking, Madoka could easily destroy that paper. Someone rings the bell in their Sakura, and that's the beginning of a beautiful and with benefits friendship. She starts visiting him every day, so Shuru does what anyone would do if received a visitor at random. Makes her do all the housework. What did you think I was going to say, you pervert? By the way, it's not child labor because he's not paying. Shuru is better, I thought he had broken his arm, but it looks like a dog ripped off his shoulder. A few months have passed and now Sakura is in high school just like Emiya. I wonder if this height gap between them will change out of nowhere. They'll even take a picture to save the moment. Who's holding the camera is this guy with a friendly face. Yep, now they're basically the same height. Shuru's trying to fix this heater. Or maybe he's praying for him, I don't know. Emiya's a religious boy, he likes to pray, it doesn't matter what. They go to her house and meet there with this leprechaun. Is this the mage world? Is he literally a garden dwarf? And do those eyes count as unusual pupils? I have so many questions. Shuru has a dream with this cute girl who looks like she came out from a horror movie. He wakes up and feels his sheet is wet, has a weird smell, but it's not urine. Don't worry. If you consider Fate Zero as canon cheese has a legal age. Anyway, Shuru stays late at the club cuz he's cleaning the place. Suddenly a very strong wind blowing on his face, it must be that legendary villain from the Three Little Pigs. What is it? Doesn't the Holy Grail bring warriors from ancient stories back to life? Shuru runs for his life, the big bad wolf doesn't usually spare his victims, however, he's significantly bad at chasing, smart move by the main character. Then happens those events that you already know, they won't show it again cuz it's like watching Uncle Ben die in a Spider-Man movie. She takes him to the judge to explain to him the Holy Grail war rules. Instead, he just talks about a lot of random shit while Edgily smiles. Outside they meet Ilya again and this time she's accompanied. Saber attacks him and the swords collide. Well, in fact, she holds it with the mind power. I hear metals clashing, but I don't see any sword in her hand. Ilya dances for no apparent reason cause she's a free woman. Meanwhile, Hercules sinks his fist into Saber's small intestine. At the final blow moment, Shuru jumps in her front, what a simp. This turns his belly into bolognese noodles. Ilya decides to leave, and a few hours later he's healed. Oh sure, the average Japanese teenager abdomen. Tasaka asks why the actual f he jumped into Saber's front. Even though she's a legendary swordsman and he's a standard wanker. I told you, he's a simp. After that, they go home passing through quite cordial streets. In one of those dark and safe alleys, Shuru meets a friend from school in a poltergeist experience. Oh, my bad, actually it's just a sexy vampire. She's Shinji's servant, he doesn't want to get in the f***ing robot, but undoubtedly he wants to get in her. Shun throws his chains trying to grab Saber and holds her by the arm. That makes Saber drop her on the floor. Then she pulls and it's a home one. Damn, some fake girls look like they were made for a corn game, oh wait, they really were. He takes her to the judge who's also a priest, a priest in fates like a supernatural doctor, that means, a shaman. Katamire is kinda perverted too. He and Saber tell Shuru how his father was a mage killer who blew up airplanes with bazookas to avoid a zombie infection blah 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 nothing interesting at all. The other day, Fujimura meets the swordswoman, Jesus, I want to see Saber in kimono every day when I wake up. Shuru meets Tasaka at school and they talk about some unimportant bullshit, who cares? Here, let's appreciate Saber in kimono a little more. She's so cute that even Sakura got a blushing face. Emiya arrives with some bags and warns that for now on Sakura will sleep in this house. They say anything goes in war, but I didn't expect him to take an enemy's little sister as a hostage. A sword goes down the stairs just that. This man menstruates by mouth, like, a lot. An arm comes out of him, congratulations, it's a boy, I guess. The real assassin defeats the monk and caster skillfully. Then as expected from his class he silently leaves. Here Emiya another wet dream, this time with the defenseless Tasaka. He meets her, Rin explains that someone defeated caster and Kazuki sensei, Shuru should be grateful for that. At home, he meets Oni Chan Matu who throws a left jab at Imo Udo Matu. What does Shuru do about it? He blows up a piece of wood, I hope a splinter got in his eye. How about some real action? Assassins watching the city from above, what a beautiful view. Lancer appears ruining the blade's edge just to look back Badass, I admit it works. Assassin gets a ride on a stork truck and Lancer chases him in Usain Bolt style. How the f didn't the driver see an adult man in a blue colon holding a red stick while runs on the asphalt? This other douche is even throwing cars at him. They face each other fiercely. Drivers in this city have a serious problem with attention deficit disorder. Inattentive drivers, sounds pretty safe. This is the manliest and stupidest way to stop an enemy knife. The cars explode and a father's not gonna have dinner with his family this night. Who cares? Assassin's still on the run. They reach a lake, or river, weir, whatever. Suddenly something pulls Lancer by his leg. He's trying to resist, but the summoned skull takes advantage of the situation. His arm has the same power as Luffy. A lot of flashing light looks like Christmas, but it's just ufotable. Now a way to get to the heart of the loved one quickly, credits to Kakashi. Meanwhile, the cool trio strolling in the rain, damn punks. They meet the Matu gardener. He's controlling a servant with some bugs, gross. Saber attacks like only the best girl could end. What the f***? She stole Gilgamesh's power. Again it all ends with a lot of flashing light and visual effects. She's ready to blow all the shit up. 
but upgrade from Ben 10 appears leaving everyone confused, what an unexpected crossover. Shuru goes on a date with Kodamine, one's a priest and the other's a minor. If he tries something with you Emiya-kun just yell out, okay, goddammit. Shuru was very impressed with the bill and he didn't eat anything. Many conversations happen, it's an endless blah blah blah. These two schizophrenics are talking while their backs are to each other. They invade the private property in search of magical things, certainly the police will understand. Saber and assassin play tag around the temple. Using magic winds should be considered cheating on the tag. Is this cunt the phantom of the opera or what? So these kinds of tentacles grab Saber, I don't like where this is going. She's experiencing heavy psychological pressure. Meanwhile, Emiya Shuru plays a pest control. A short break with the action cause Sakura is having an unusual dream. By the expression, I bet she's dreaming she get into college or that her team won the national championship. The main character will attack an elderly person, but the Punisher appears with his combat abilities. He's about to finish him, but you know the rule, the main character does not die. I still prefer Saber, but Shun is pretty too. She completely destroys him in combat while dancing with the director's nasty close-ups. Damn, she looks a lot like Sakura. Meanwhile, Saber has to face her own darkness. And by face her own darkness I mean a change of clothes and appearance. Continue in the next movie, Saber who dresses better wins. Oh wait, there's still a thing I forget. If you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe, I'd like to ask you to watch at least two videos of the channel in a row because it helps me a lot, also make a friend watch this video too, use violence if necessary, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, bye.